everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, we've got an exciting new build video to share with you guys today. Today, we're gonna to be building up the brand new tooled and soon to be released to me a 35th scale Jagdpanzer Martyr One. And like I was saying, it's a brand new, completely new tool kit, brand new pack 40, all of that stuff. Really, really nice kit inside. The kit will be out in sometime in early to mid-October from what we understand and has a price of about $40 in the United States. Now, in the preview video, we talked about the different ways that we can build this up. And I heard a lot from you guys and really appreciate it too, going back and forth between the tricolor, the gray, and then of course the winter or the desert version. Heard a lot of people say that the desert version that Tamiya talked about is a different vehicle. And I couldn't find any pictures of this specific vehicle in North Africa. Could have been, may not be. So because I couldn't see any in there, I decided I was going to go with the tricolor. We just did a winter one of a Panzer IV recently and our 38T in gray. So I thought, I haven't done a light version of the uh, tricolor in a while. And I wanted to use the new LP paints in the new dark yellow 2, dark green 2, and the... Uh, Red brown too, that's the other one we were looking for. So we have tried out all those new colors on it. I think they came out really, really nice on the vehicle and they're lacquer paint, so they hold up really well. Now, this is gonna be a great addition to some of the other Martyr kits, as you guys may know. They had some of the other Martyr 3s that have been out over the years. In fact, go ahead down below in the comments and tell me what was your favorite Martyr, whether it be one of these or one of the other ones that some of the other companies have come out with. I am really, really, at first I was like, didn't know too much about this vehicle, but after building it, I think it's a really cool little vehicle. It's small, you can put it in a diorama. And speaking of dioramas, we are going to start building up a diorama on it. And I want you to stay tuned to the very end of the video because I stumbled upon something that I think is going to be great for making a tree diorama. It's quick and easy. Wow, it's really, really cool. So at the end of the video, we'll show you a little bit more about that. And also, if you'd like to see it maybe in another type of diorama, I'm probably gonna do a forest diorama in this, but if you want to, go ahead and leave in the comments down below too, if you'd like to maybe see it in like Normandy or in Germany or wherever right there, just what, how you'd like to see in a diorama, because I do look at all your comments. And in fact, I'm gonna to try to answer more and more of your comments and questions in the comments and questions section down below. So go ahead and leave all the questions and comments you want and we'll certainly uh, take a look at them and answer as many as we can. So, let's get started. Okay, let's start on the construction of the lower part of the hull. As you can see, it's not a bathtub style hull, but they have lots of internal bracing inside here to make sure everything glues up nice and square. Now let's show you how the basics of this go. Next, we're going to attach the transmission cover here. And very easy to get it upside down, but make sure these two little tiny pins right here are on the bottom portion of the hull. And that way you'll know that it is in the correct position. Tweezers are definitely recommended on this kit. There are lots of little tiny parts. Fit is very, very good on them, but it's good to have a good pair of tweezers, especially the angled tweezers like that, to manipulate the part into place. Okay, as we go ahead to start cutting out the suspension pieces, I'm gonna definitely recommend that you have a really good sharp pair of cutters because it's some really fine work getting up inside in here. And I've also noticed, I'll kind of show you up inside here, to me it has gone with a really narrow gate 
for all of these pieces. So they are easy to cut just like that, but having the actual fine sharp point cutters really helps out a lot. Now we're going to assemble the suspension pieces and there are some really tiny little pieces on this including these return rollers here which we're going to glue those first into place and i've got one piece assembled already up here and you can see you assemble it as one long piece so what we need to do now is we need to put the three springs inside here okay so to put a tiny bit of cement here and here Having this little spring unit place that in position just like that and this side we've just taken these wheels and just placed them on they're not glued into place as you can see right there slap that on there and this will get mounted just like that and what I'm going to do is I'm only going to put a little bit of cement up here on the top and a little bit on the inside in there. And hopefully if we do it right, we can keep these wheels spinning. It'll make them just a little bit easier to uh, paint later on. And once that is all completed, we can go down the line over here and put the other side of the return roller up on top, just like that. Those are going to be a little bit of a pain to paint, but I think we'll be able to do it. We also need to paint inside of here as well. This is going to be black. This is another return roller up on top. So I will go ahead and get the last little uh, set of bogies inside there, and then we'll show you how they attach to the side of the hull. get the tracks to fit properly it's very important that you trim them precisely especially these little areas here you do not want to leave any excess plastic or the tracks will not fit correctly okay, when it comes to assembling these tracks a good pair of tweezers is of course certainly necessary and you want to get them together and then just using the smallest amount of cement just put a little bit on there to get them to stop binding. You don't want to put too much cement on at this point or it'll end up gluing them down to your cutting mat. So carefully, just go down the line. Just a touch on each little one right there. Now for the first section, we need to put eight of these little links of track together and then it'll be followed up by the actual long piece of track here. Now I have a complete video that'll show you how to do these tracks way more in depth than this, but for right now, I'm just kind of kind of put them all together, uh, kind of fast motion and show you how that all goes together.
So here is the lower hole mostly complete right now. We've got all of our tracks into place. You can see how narrow of a vehicle it is. And now we can begin to work on the upper part of the hull. And we start off by applying this panel right, or this plate, which has the fenders already on it. And I'm just gonna dry fit this stuff right now just to kind of show you guys. Uh, we'll glue one piece together here, and that is part of this front here. And just so this kind of falls off easily if we don't. So we'll just glue this one into place right here. But then once this gets put down, Go ahead, this will attach right in here, and this piece will get mounted right in there. And look at the fit on that. That is incredible. There, I mean, just for dry fitting, other than that one little panel, all of that stuff just clicks into place right there. And the other thing we need to do, I need to do a little sanding on this one first, but then we can apply the top of the rack that'll go right inside here. And then there's this little brace that'll hold it up as well. With the sides now dry, we can attach the brackets for the back here that will hold the rear plate for the fighting compartment on. Just like that, we want to let those fully dry and then we can go ahead and attach the, the back panel. We have the back panel ready to attach now. There are a few injector pin marks throughout the uh, the back here. There's one here, one here, and here that will probably get seen, so we sanded those out. The other two are going to be behind another panel, so with that being done, we can go ahead and glue this panel right into place here. Now, I did attach this little box right here, but a bunch of the other little boxes I did not attach inside yet. We will build those after we paint. Uh, but this one I think is going to be tough to put in if we don't put in right now. Okay, here is the mostly completed lower hull. I thought the seams worked really, really well on this kit. All lined up really, really, really perfectly. Now you can see there's a bunch of holes all over the hull here. These are a little accessory pieces, just little minor stuff, which I'm gonna go ahead and put all of those pieces on right now off camera. They're all just little, little fiddly bits. And then after I get all of that done, I will show you what it looks like and then we'll start building the pack 40. This is the, the hull with most of the little accessories on. There are little parts like the jack and, and other pieces like that that are gonna get painted separately. And that's why there's still a few holes on there as well as half of a dude hanging out on top there. So now let's get uh, the assembly going on the actual gun itself. I've assembled a few little sub-assemblies just to, to speed up like the, uh, the gun breech. The gun itself is mostly one piece except for the muzzle brake. We've got all that sanded now and you can see that fits together pretty tightly. So we'll go ahead and glue that and sand that up as well. 
But let's start working on the rest of the gun here first. And the last piece that we're going to leave off for right now is the, the sight. We want to paint that black and it'll be a lot easier painting it separately, but it'll get mounted right up in here, of course, going the other way. And finally, there's the last little bit of the mount that we need to deal with. And as you can see right here, there's a little notch cut out that makes it a little bit wider there, the little key. And you put the gun all the way to the right and then rotate it back and then it'll lock it into place. Okay. With all of the gun built up now, we want to line it up perfectly in there and drop it into place. I did put a little bit of cement on the very bottom on the two connector pins, and that should be enough to get it in there. Uh, well, we can paint that pack 40 ammo up and drop it in right around there, but there you are. There is our basically completed uh, vehicle, obviously minus a couple of the little accessories like the jack, things like that, that we have built, but we just haven't put into place yet. Very cool little vehicle, tiny little vehicle too. As you can see, I've started to paint the vehicle here. And I'll show you what I've done on side. But first, before we do that, I'll let you know that we are using Tamiya's new LP paint, which is their new lacquer paint, which hopefully should be available in the United States maybe by the end of the year. But we're going to use their dark yellow number two, their dark green number two, and their red brown number two. And I mixed them up using about 30% lacquer thinner and, of course, 70% paint to come up with a nice blend on it. As you can see in this part of the video, we painted the, the lower part of the hull, the running gear, the tracks and all that, all in a NATO black color. We wanted to create some shadows, but because it is going to be done in a three color tritone, uh, it's not really worth doing the black and white up on top. You're putting so many layers of paint on, you don't really see that two-tone. But we will accomplish that two-tone another way, which we'll show you in a minute. So after the black is put on, we are going to use our dark or yeah dark yellow number two put a coat of that on there I actually put two coats on here because we we put them on very light and, and build them up and then now what we're going to do in this picture here you can see I've gone ahead and taken 50% white 50% of dark yellow too and made a lighter color of it and we've gone around the edges here and lightened up some of the paint job and we're going to use that for a fading technique we want to do that on the dark yellow first 
and then we will apply the red brown and the green over that because the uh, that way the the yellow would fade quicker because that paint was been on there the longest the green and the brown was something that was added on later on and we are going to do a little bit of fading on that but we're going to do it and step by step so as you can see here we've got some of the fading we've also touched up some of the uh, the lower part of the run Here is the camouflage pattern that I've put on the vehicle now. Now obviously we still have to do touch up around the tracks and the lower part of the uh, the running gear, but that's all something we're going to do later on. Now that we have all the paint on, we're going to go ahead and seal the model with a uh, dull coat and then we'll be able to put our decals on, seal it again, and then start the weathering process. Now I've taken a little strip of cardstock, or actually, excuse me, styrene. I took a little strip of styrene here and practiced the, the weathering pattern we want to do on this particular vehicle. So once we get all of the clear coats on, we can go ahead and I'll show you how we start doing the chipping process. Okay, now we're going to start the chipping process. We're going to use a real ultra fine brush. In fact, this is called Tamiya's Ultra Fine and it is very nice for starting to do the chips we're going to just slowly start to work around all the edges where paint would get worn off on. And I'll show you the, the recipe that we use for the paint color here. And after I put the paint color together, added a little bit of Tamiya's paint retarder to it as well. You want to keep the drying process to slow down a little bit so the paint isn't drying instantly like to me a paint can sometimes do. With the paintbrush chips applied, we're using a little piece of torn foam using the same color paint and very, very little paint on the foam. We kind of blend that together. It's going to create some small little scratches. And after we let that dry, I'm first taking some clean enamel thinner and putting it on the areas to wet down the surface. It makes the streaking effects, the enamel streaking effects, flow a lot, lot easier. And once we get the enamel completely everywhere we want, we can put the streaking effect, in this case streaking grime, to start with. And it goes on kind of thick to begin with, but that's okay because we want it to flow all over the place and get into all the little nooks and crannies all the bolt heads, all the little areas you'd find grime. And now we are going to take a clean brush with a little enamel thinner on it and kind of start to blot and move it around and blend. Blending and blending and blending is something you're going to want to do quite a bit on this and you see how it pulls away some of the excess streaking effect and leaves it just around the bolt heads. And we can apply a little bit more clean thinner here, kind of do some more blending. Now, the streaking effects, we're going to use multiple colors. We're going to use like a streaking grime, a dark streaking rust, a light streaking rust, uh, and a few other little variations of browns and dark browns and reddish browns to kind of blend it together and give it a dirty, dirty effect. 
we don't want to forget the area around the road wheels and all the running gear. That part is going to be extremely dirty compared to the rest of the vehicle. So we want to make sure we get a lot of it in there around the road wheels. And anything that we don't like later on, we can always blend it or take it off with enamel thinner. Now here we're showing you some of the other colors. Uh, we put on multiple different colors. This is the light rust. And we follow up each one of the layers with a cotton swab and kind of blot and blend the areas together to remove any excess paint that we think it looks a little bit too heavy in certain areas. And you can see how it's starting to remove it around those bolts and leaving just the bolts themselves on it. And we're going to also use an old toothbrush using the same streaking enamel effects and put some little splashes here and there. And now we want to create some shadows around each one of those bolts. We have them nice and dirty, but we want to give that little shadow effect both in the, uh, the air intakes, radiators, anything like that. We want to create the shadow on it as well as all these little bolts. You watch how they just start to pop and come alive. Some of them you don't even really notice until the black hits it and it really draws your eyes to it. Okay, now we're going to start to install some of the accessory pieces, like the ammunition we're putting inside there. That one is not going to be on the floor. That one just fell off in there, but we're going to load that in there. Plus, we're going to start installing all of the tools on here. So we have the jack all painted up, some of the other little tools as well. And we're going to get those installed right now. Okay, we've got all of the tools attached. And the last thing I wanted to apply is a little silver metallic powder. And for the tracks, I'm just going to use my finger. I find that it works really good to get just all the high points on it. And then once we get all of that done, we'll use a fine brush with very, very little pigment powder to highlight all the rivets, bolts, sides of the tracks, anything that we want to have a little glint of light to pop off of. And here we are guys, here is our completed model. I've gone ahead and done a little bit of refining on the weathering and the blending of some of the pigments and things like that, as well as all of the streaking effects. I have to say, to me, it did an excellent job on this kit. It was a lot of fun to put together, very easy to put together. Uh, fit is excellent. In fact, I enjoyed it so much so I wouldn't mind building up another one of these and doing a uh, different version of it. Maybe doing one of the German gray ones with the winterized pattern on it, something like that. And finally, I thought I would just assemble the two figures that come in here to give you guys a sense of scale, uh, you know, to show you how big the vehicle actually is in real life. Sometimes you look at just the vehicle on its own and it's kind of tough to say, but that gives you an idea how big the vehicle is. And here is an example of the new trees I'm working on for an upcoming diorama. They are super simple to produce and only take a few minutes to do each one of them. I started off using a actual real plant from my yard and happened to be walking by and noticed, man, that is the perfect base for a pine tree. And with a little bit of static grass and a few other things, you can make these up in a matter of less than 10 minutes. So we're going to produce a little forest of those and maybe do a little diorama with uh, these trees inside of it. But we'll have that on a future upcoming video. So like I was saying earlier, I want to thank you for watching. And please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.